Okay, are we ready? May I, may I start? All right, cool. All right, guys, so... Uh, Hello. So today I'll be talking about Ruby Motion. Uh, Ruby Motion is a pretty cool tool. Uh, you can use, you basically write, um, you basically write Ruby and it compiles into native code uh, on objectives or uh, as Objective C or or Java for for Android. So you, you basically you can you basically write your mobile app or desktop OS X app uh, in in Ruby and basically compiles into um, uh, into the uh, into the um, Objective C and code and you can basically write an app with it. This is kind of cool. Um, right, so. So I basically, I didn't prepare any slides, I just have sorry, some notes here. So basically getting it is pretty easy. Uh, you probably got an email from Mike Museo some time ago. So basically you just download the binary, the zip file, unzip it and just run the installer. And basically run, uh, in, in, in basically everything is in the, in the console, right? So just open your um, item or whatever and just type sudo motion activate with the license key. And of course, you have to install Xcode. If you're doing iOS apps you know, or Mac or Mac S apps, you need to uh, download the Objective C. Oh, sorry, uh, or Xcode. If you're doing uh, Android development, you probably need to download NDK and all the other, all the other SDKs that you need for Android. Um, creating a project is pretty simple as well. Just write, just type motion create, followed by the, the folder name or the project name. You can add uh, at the back just dash dash template iOS. OS X or Android, which will basically create the base, uh, base file that you need for for uh, one application. So I can just do a quick one right now. Uh, let's see, go into uh, scratch pad. So I can do motion, create, um, hello, right? So basically what it does, it, it generates a whole bunch of files. Um, and you go to hello. Oops. Yeah, so everything you need is here. So it's very much like writing a an iOS app. So it start, first starts with an app delegate, which is the starting point of any any iOS application, right? So so it has the same uh, kind of stuff that you need, uh, or rather that you you find in a in a uh, iOS app. Um, and even the method names are pretty much the same, uh, or rather it's close to being a one to one mapping. Of what you find in uh, in, in Objective C uh, into Ruby, um, right? So in this case, it's basically creating a root controller, a view controller. It's adding a navigation controller, and then it makes it visible, right? Basically, same stuff you find. And to run it, you basically all you do is just type motion. No, sorry, it's, just, it's all rake. Basically, everything you need is in rake. Uh, so just type rake. It basically compiles the app and you can start and basically it loads it up into a simulator. So you can see it over here, it's a very basic app. Right? And you can also um, you can pull down the command key and you can actually inspect different parts of, of the of this uh, thing. You can go and say self.title or something. Yeah, so you can set self.title equals hello. Again, I, I hope this works. Shit, it doesn't work. Okay, fine. It, theoretically, you can go in and make the changes that if you, you know what the property name yeah, is. Yeah, you know what the property name okay, is and all that cool. stuff. So you can actually do use this to do some uh, debugging. Is there a tab complete? So if you said self tab. Self dot. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's see what they have. Holy crap. Okay, yeah. Sweet. It's pretty cool. Uh, uh, it, should, it, yeah, I, it actually it does. does. So you you you, update, you keep you, it's like I was trying to change the title, but I guess I was pointing to the wrong place. So I'm done. Just start exit. I'm done. Uh, if you can also run, uh, there is a testing framework that comes with uh, that comes with it. So okay, so once uh, let's go through the notes. So basically, command command line interface. Everything is in command line, and basically you, all all things you do is in rake. So you just type rake. Um, you can see all the tasks that they have. So you can basically create a create an archive, do the build, build it for a device or simulator. Or the default is actually just to run it in a simulator. Okay, you, so this doesn't generate Objective C; it generates the compiled 
Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. If you want, you can also generate a static file if you want to include it in an existing uh, iOS project. Cool. Yeah, which is kind of nice. So, yeah, and getting, you can also do, there's a test, you can also run tests as well. Uh, you know, you can break spec. So, what uh, they have is um, they don't use RSpec, but they use a clone of RSpec called Bacon. Yeah, it's called bacon. So it's it's, it's kind of, it's, like, it's, a, it's yeah, it's a clone. Um, so in that case, so basically, why? Uh, I think he doesn't need the full R spec uh, library, and because he needs to statically compile it, so there's probably some external dependencies that is not required. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's a stripped down version. Uh, the DSL is pretty much just quite quite intuitive. In this case, the test is failing, so I will change this to two because there was like, there's actually two windows. Uh, so I can run that again. Uh, it should pass. Hopefully. Yes, it passed. It's great. Yeah, so um, that's for the. So you can basically yeah, do this in your favorite tool. You can use Vim, you can use Emacs. Uh, there's even. If you use RubyMine, RubyMine already has like support for this out of the box. Like I have it, I have it running right now over here. So basically, it, the best part about using Remind is that you get all the auto complete that uh, that would come with with this with that stuff. So it basically, it actually finds all the uh, methods and you can do all the auto completes that you need. This is kind of cool. The IntelliSense rather, IntelliSense all there. Um, right. So it's a clo it's close to one to one mapping of iOS to to the iOS SDK. So basically, you have things like App Delegate, even the methods all look the same. There's a, you can you have full access to the full you have access to the full view controller lifecycle. Uh, the names are pretty much mapped one to one. Um, one thing that I really that, that is uh, one thing that they have is I hope we see I hope we can see this. Um, so for example, this you can create like a view controller. Uh, it extends from the UI view controller. It loads view. Um, in this case, I'm actually creating a button. Adding a target to it, basically uh, the action button, action to it, basically is everything is here. So it's like what we have in an iOS app, like a messaging, uh, mess messages that you send in in a in Objective C, things that are in square brackets and stuff. You to translate it uh, into into a into a um, something like this. So basically, in it with uh, title, the second parameter is passed pass in as a hash. So basically it's like whatever comes in uh, subsequently uh, is, is in the hash, right? Um, which is kind of nice. So it's pretty much follow the same syntax as you find in Objective-C and which is kind of cool, right? So you can even do things, um, yeah, so you can alloc any it or you can just do new, which is the Ruby way of doing it. It works as well. Uh, if I'm running it on, on uh, I'm running this in RubyMine, so I can actually run the test. I can run it in the simulator. Right. So pretty much everything you need. And because I I, I bound this to a method, we should basically do like put index equals something, and basically it was echoing out as I press this first one, mm -hmm. one, and and stuff like that. So basically, it's, you can you can see the, the output in in the console as well below. And I believe if you if I jump in here right now, mm -hmm. I can change the label. I hope. Let's see. I can change the label itself. What's this? What's itself? So I UI label itself dot title. Can I ask a question? Where is alert view? So line forty-five. Uh -huh. That's another call alert view. Oh, you. So you pass. I'm sure you're like, where? Who's calling alert view? All right. Uh, so in Objective C, there's a, there's a, there's a concept of delegate. So basically, you you delegate a callback that comes with. So the alert view has a bunch of callback delegates. Yeah. Then basically, this is the method that kind of 
triggers it. So this, there's a certain API that you, that you that is. Yeah, got it. So you just got to conform to the interface. Correct. Just as long as you conform to the interface, you, uh, you, you should be pretty straightforward. So this one, you don't actually have to set it, but if you want to do some action from right. based on, what, on the, what, what the user types, you have to delegate it to an object. So it need not be this. Usually the, best, the usual practice is actually to delegate it to the, to the, to the same class. Um, you can actually delegate it to an external uh, or yeah. class, or you can pass in another object, which is also kind of cool. So basically, this is the yeah. So the similar thing in if you're doing this objective C, this is kind of like how you would do it. So you have a UI, UI alert view alloc, and then you init with title and stuff like that. So so this is the yeah. What you have here, pencil button. So this is how you how you would be if you are writing a uh, I, writing this in iOS. Yeah. So all the square brackets would be would that would mean a uh, method or message that you're trying to send to this. Yeah. So um, I can run this. Of course, you've seen it. Right? I've seen you run this. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, Why? Uh, this uh, the guys from uh, Ruby my. Uh, Ruby Motion also added a whole bunch of um, uh, sample codes you can that you can download. There's a there's a sample code uh, project which has all, all, a whole bunch of sample codes you can get for iOS, uh, Android, and so on and so forth. It's, it's all very cool. Uh, like even so, it supports all the native stuff that you, you get on on iOS. So like maps, uh, you can get access to the camera. Uh, you can even write a sprite kit game, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, Flappy Bird. So even Android games and even OS X uh, apps, you can get it from here. So basically, it's one one giant Git repo. Just check it out. Go into the folder, type break, and basically you should run properly. Um, if you want to reload this into your, for example, I have here right now a Flappy Bird sprite kit game. So basically, like stuff, uh, you want to, if I want to load this into phone, all you do is just go to the rig file and add this 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 item here. So basically, it's the provision profile. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with uh, uh, writing apps in, basically, you need to get a. Okay. Right. So in order to load uh, an app into the phone for testing, you need to get a developer account. Yeah. Once you get a developer account, you just log on and on Xcode, basically you detect all your devices uh, that you want to use for testing yeah. and you generate a profile uh, which will allow you to, to, to usually it's a one-to-one, -one. basically it's like one app has a group of devices that are supported and that profile will contain all the devices that are known to for, for development. Uh, you can also create a generic profile which, which is not bound to any uh, application. Um, so usually they identify application based on a application name. Um, so in this case, the application name is called Flappy. So you can it's like a namespace as well, com dot Flappy or com dot Flappy. So that's usually that the, the app identifier. So if you, you what I have here is just a basic uh, generic uh, profile that could work on any app, right? Um, yeah. So it's a, they call it a team profile. So basically, it's a profile you can, you can share with your entire team. And where did that profile and mobile provision file come from? Did Xcode create it? Xcode basically phones home to Apple and downloads uh, and generates the key for you. Um, I think it's under preferences, accounts, you can I think get some details. So yeah. That process is very elegant. Yeah, the, the old way is actually to go to the developer site, generate the profiles one by one, download the file and... Okay, so here you add a profile right. if you want to make one. Yeah, you can actually create one if you need, if you need one, uh, or you can just download new stuff. Um, usually you have to go to the website, uh, the developer site to check, to create a new app. And once you create a new app you want that you wish to publish, it will basically create a new profile here for you which you can then download. Uh, and registering devices mm -hmm. is now done through Xcode. So Xcode registers your device so with that, that profile has something signed by Apple on it that the code the, the phone is looking for before it yes. Got it. That's right. what I was trying to make connect the dots in my head. Yep. How does it do this access control? Right. So yeah, so so basically once you add this uh, provisioning profile, you can 
then deploy this into the device. So I'll try and run this on the device now. Run on device, uh, which basically it does basically is running Rake, Rake device, um, and it should it will com compile the app and just try to load it into. Oops. Application is running. This application is running, but it's not showing up. No. Yeah, it was probably locked. Okay, sorry about that. Run device. And I'll try to bring up so I can create a new movie recording. Oh no, why? Why not? Uh, there you go. So this is ah. this is actually you're seeing what's on my phone now. Oh it crashed. Never mind. But essentially you have something like this. Yeah. So it's something new that was added uh, in in uh, your is it Yosemite? Yosemite? Uh, so you can use uh, the QuickTime to yeah. basically they they are using this basically to like capture uh, screen flows that you can then publish onto onto the App Store. Yeah. So all the screen flow you see on the App Store usually comes uh, using this this very straightforward uh, kind of recording. So basically, it takes whatever is on the screen and kind of yeah. Does it show touch events too? Like when you touch the screen? Uh, nope, not really. So which is which kind of sucks. Anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So that you can, you can basically interact with it. You can I can pass you the phone later if you need to want to play around. Um, yeah. So when you're done, you just close it. Yeah. You, you could probably just add a file on your app that would enable touch event display, and then just let that execute. Oh, oh. So the app would draw itself, not quick time draw. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So. Let's see what else is there. Uh, okay, so one to one mapping. Right, so the some of the advantages is that there's no separate file that like in Objective C they actually have um, they require to both the header file and the implement file, which is kind of irritating. So which is kind of like uh, yeah, so the header file which tells us what it has, what what methods to expose and the implement file. It's just so, like C. Yeah, it's such as C. But uh, in Ruby it's just one file that it, it handles all um, the memory management and all that stuff for you, which is kind of kind of kind of great. Um, uh, yeah, so there's no word need to worry about memory management because uh, Ruby Motion does all that for you. Um, so basically, code in Ruby you compile to OS X or iOS or Android. Um, the the syntax, or rather the, the files that it creates, are a little bit different for for a OS X app. For example, for OS X app, it's uh, the files like you still have app delegate because it's on Objective C, um, but it uses other things like menu, which helps you generate the menu and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit different for each of the of the uh, platforms that you're you're building for. Um, for Android, you create like the main activity, but it's all, yeah, the main activity file, and you'll be in Ruby and stuff like that. So just yeah, so you still need to know a little bit about. Um, the platform specific things yeah. that you need to work to work for. Um, testing tools, as I said, there's a there's a raw spec clone called Bacon. Uh, for Q you can also write acceptance tests using a, a cucumber like uh, app called Calabash. Uh, I don't have a working sample, but there's a there's some documents they can. This is a website Calabash, which is yeah basically you can do uh, you can automate um, clickings, or swiping, and and. And all that, all the actions on the screen. Do I have to use Calabash, or is there like a, an R spec, or sorry, a, yeah, like an R spec? <coughs> like you know how Capybara lets me talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do I have something like that, or do I have to? I use think, that? I think there, there might be, uh, there might be. Oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't really gone in depth. Um, right. So, and basically, you can add third-party uh, libraries using Ruby gems. You can, you basically have a, there's a gem file which you can uh, go in and then add. Um, Additional stuff that you need, so like the gen file looks something like this. So in this case, it actually generates a, uh, yeah. And you, but the gems are very specific to Ruby Motion. So um, the guys at Ruby Motion has, has helpfully created a, a, a site for this. Um, I'm trying to find it, yeah. The the Motion Toolbox has a whole bunch of um, gems that are Ruby Motion compatible because mainly you need to have the library to be statically compiled. Uh, so that it can be included into the application. Um, 
So, uh, those says how you can add third party and um, like stuff that you need. Um, let's see what else is there. Yeah, so stuff is certainly compiled. You've seen the demo, so there's still need more. There's some notable projects. So, uh, for example, you can see that the, the coding, coding uh, an app in, in Ruby, you're still following the same way of writing stuff in Objective-C. So you use, use like one-to-one -one mapping, but for, it can be a little bit cumbersome and in this like a lot of things you need to deal with. Um, so some guys has actually put together a, a Ruby DSL, so you can just use that those DSLs to write like simple things like bringing up uh, alert view or uh, showing the camera and saving the images and stuff like that. So bubble, bubble wrap is one of these projects, which is kind of cool as well. Um, so yeah, so basically. It has so it has a whole bunch of different stuff you can do. Uh, it has HTTP wrapper, RSS parser. Um, you want to have access to the camera? You can actually use that. The location is all here. So let's have a look at the camera. I think it's further down. Yeah. So it has a Ruby-like. Uh, yeah. For example, this. If you want to do this in Objective C, there'll be like you need to create a UI image picker and and some other some other stuff which. A lot of boilerplate code. So this guy, this uh, uh, library basically wraps all that up into a very simple DSL. Um, another one I've seen is um, ProMotion. ProMotion, I think we should be one of these other tabs. Um, ProMotion, yeah. So ProMotion is another one which has a, it's like instead of writing app delegate, uh, you, you also, it has a simpler, DSL for, for doing this. That's on load. You can tell which screen you want and stuff like that. So it's a very much Ruby-like, simpler uh, DSL they 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 work with. Um, which is all very all very cool. There's even a I found this just recently. It's called Nitron. So basically, lets you um, access the data. I think it's a core data. Core data. So uh, on on iOS there is a SQLite database they can load that you, that you can use and uh, this is a simple wrapper that lets you talk to uh, the core data or rather the SQLite uh, layer which is should be yeah so call it core data active record support so it's kind of active record kind of DSL which is kind of cool um, what else is there so in in in, in, in Running an iOS or Objective C uh, project, there is usually a, a thing called interface builder. So they have a storyboard which has, uh, which you can then drag and drop elements, and even ma manage a flow between one screen to the next screen and stuff like that. Um, you lose the use of this uh, somehow because you're not use, you're not doing this in, in Xcode. But there are libraries that lets you uh, um, that lets you kind of still work with them. Or generate them in the command line. Uh, one of them is called IB, so it creates IB outlets for for Ruby Motion. There's also a sample project that I found, um, which shows you how you can use Ruby Motion with a storyboard. A storyboard is like a, a drag, a drag, drag and drop uh, 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 GUI, which kind of shows you can, you can drag and drop elements and arrange them in, uh, in on the screen. Um, yeah, so. It's kind of nice. Um, also for you for learning, uh, Ruby Motion. There is a video podcast uh, called Motion in Motion, which is kind of kind of nice as well. So it has a whole bunch of videos you can just watch um, and to learn. So there's there's a series that they have now, Ruby Motion for Rails developers. So for uh, Rails developers, you can watch this and pretty much get a good sense of. How everything is put together. You have, especially if you have no experience writing uh, Objective C or developing iOS app. So it gives you the it helps you mind, it helps you um, map the concepts. Um, the offer introduces it introduces you to the the concepts of uh, in Ruby Motion. Um, yeah, and maps it to how it's like in in uh, Objective C, which is kind of nice. Uh, there's a, you, you pay for subscription. Sorry. Yeah, there's this quite a lot. Um, they've been doing this for, I think, a couple of years. Um, yeah, I just got a subscription recently, so it's kind of cool. It's about nine ninety for 
uh, per month. So it's, um, I think we good to get it and so you guys can learn. Um, yeah, so his examples are mostly um, iOS. Um, I don't think he has any Android examples yet. Um, they just added Android support. Yeah, recently. yeah. Was very recent. Android support. I, was, I was just kind of curious how that would work. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, the guides on the Ruby Motion website is actually quite, quite, uh, quite good. It also shows you how to write stuff in iOS or Android, and even has a nice uh, document on testing, how do you write tests in, uh, in Ruby Motion, right? So, which is kind of cool. Considering the um, APIs are the same, mm -hmm. for the Android one, you need to do the same thing. We have actually tried like using the um, like have we tried porting some port code we got right now over the Android. Uh, mm. Trying to get the Android stuff into it. Just I've not yeah, I've not tried I've not tried coding the any of Android apps yet. So yeah. We'll just yeah, because I think you need to set up quite a fair bit of stuff like SDKs and NDKs you can download and all that. So yeah. um yeah, I only I only have like the um, yeah. Yeah, so I've not actually tried, like, because um, if you use a library like um, uh, Bubble Wrap, uh, you would basically include all the stuff that you need, like, say, call, call location and all this extra stuff. Like, when, and when I was writing uh, iOS apps, I have to worry about um, adding the proper libraries, and um, and I'm not sure how Ruby Motion actually handles all that for you, so it's something I've yet to explore. Yeah. I'm curious as to how many of James will work with the Android Ruby Motion versus iOS. Like if they had like iOS assumptions in mind. Sure. I last I check, there's only probably two or three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's only a few gems which are out of uh, some water right now. Um, yeah, so we, this motion toolbox organizes things into the categories and stuff, so, and even to the platforms. So it's kind of kind of nice. So if on an audio library, it shows you which one to use. Um, Cocos to the yeah. I like the, I, I, the what I really like is is a one to one mapping to um, to Objective C. So basically, what you write in Ruby maps directly to it. So it's like then you just not much. So um, any doc, any Objective C uh, or iOS specific documentation you can find online would definitely work, or rather, we should would be relevant to writing stuff. Like last night, I was uh, trying to create that U UI. Um, uh, alert view. This UI alert view. I forgot the syntax. So basically, I went online and googled uh, the syntax in Objective C, and I kind of mapped it in. So we just, yeah, yeah. So it's like UI alert view. Um, I mean, you're showing the elements at the running thing. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Like, can I? Is it a breakpoint or a line inspection? Yes, you can actually. Under the guy on testing, I believe there was something about duration, device, events, finding views. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, debugging. Sorry, there was a there was a document on debugging. There you go. Yeah, entering command before saves. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. So yeah. So uh, that's that's all I have actually. So um, any any questions? No. Any so other questions? if you're doing like a, say a complex interface. Yeah. How will you go about? I'll probably use storyboard and use auto layout to kind of okay. drag and drop stuff, and then I'll try to consume that storyboard in. So does Ruby Motion allow you to like design interfaces, or that's just purely like code? Code. I think it's pure okay. code right now. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Have you done any 
non-trivial apps with Ruby Motion? No, not yet. Do you know what it would There it is. Yeah. I remember a lot of recently there's been a lot more. So interestingly, one of the companies in Australia, uh, the uh, Frontier, is doing a lot of Ruby Motion uh, for it. But I, I know, like, they sort of made that, they actually had a really uh, broad post about, yeah, we really, really love it, but da 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 da, like, you know, now we're looking at Swift, which is more general purpose. So, one of the things I'm really interested in finding out is, like, if we, you know, in terms of where we put our resources for our resources to have features, it makes sense to just, like, uh, focus on Swift natively, or either should we, like, think about doing some stuff in Ruby Motion, or do we just sort of make a judgment call depending on the project? Um, particularly, we'd be interested in doing the same thing, you know, have two different ones. Have you looked at any anything like OpenGL or any like parts that like the virus security would be more portable parts of the program? But such as for Android if uh, like oh. what you're doing J and I joining extension with C or I guess the same thing in uh, yeah. I am not sure. Yeah. Not sure. I don't actually tried it, but you can try and port a. Uh, you can probably try and create a gem. You create mm -hmm. a, if it's a library that is shared between this this uh the different the different projects. You know, you create you create right. a gem, wrap it in a gem, it should be. From past experience, from past experience, managing a um, um, an app uh, using Xcode is a is a whole lot of stuff you need to deal with inside the IDE, uh, with like dependencies and all that stuff. So and even making sure it's got the right configuration for which target is is deploying to and all that stuff. So um, I think if we can if I can manage all that in code, like as simply as just updating a rig file, I think um, that is. That is that is actually pretty nice. Yeah. But I have to admit, I'm really liking Swift so far. Mm. So, as a language, which I'm not rewriting something. So. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that a crack about the fact that it's going to be like that Python app in Ruby? Yes, but you yeah. also were being self deprecating about that as well, so I don't know if it's the same time to make. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, there's there's actually documentation on the runtime. Um, there's even a section on memory management, so you can actually do very fine, a bit more fine. We have a bit more granular control, like weak references um, uh, and stuff like that. So this document, this page actually gives you a fair bit of overview of uh, the more fine, fine, uh, fine grained controls you want over the over how things work. Did you yeah. say Leo has a Ruby motion license? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we do. It's an email from Mike Mazur sometime last year. Yeah. So, yep. And if you're not familiar with the UI elements, is all the all that. Ah, uh, yeah, most documentation. Yep. Terminology. Terminology and some sample code here as well. So that's all. So basically, what you see here pretty much can um, map directly to, into Ruby Motion. It's kind of nice, like a UI alert view, like what I've shown you just now. Um, that, yeah, so basically the behavior, the callback, as, as I, um, is it? Yeah, dismiss, click the button, yeah, okay, uh, yeah. Cool. How long does it take Ruby Motion to get the latest iOS updates? I am not sure, but updating is fairly simple. Updating Ruby Motion is fairly simple. Uh, yeah. I think you just type yeah, sudo motion update. So no, you, need to, you need to wait for Ruby Motion to support yeah. whatever's new in framework. Correct. So okay. you know, like, those sweet type things where like, No, I'm not, I'm not familiar. Um, I don't remember the details, I'm probably going to say something wrong, but my instinct is because I read about this once. It was some people who were really heavily involved at Apple and really understand their stuff decided to make this. This wasn't just some Ruby fanboys who were like, we'll figure this out. It was like, I know how this stuff works in, uh, in Apple. Okay. So the guy who. I forget his name. Yeah, I used to work for Apple. Java Bridge or some other application. He did Mac Ruby. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that one. Uh, Lawrence. He's an old guy. One of them is coming for Sorry. one of them is coming for Red Dot Ruby conference. Mac Ruby was the really interesting thing yeah, because that was sort of obviously the precursor to this. Yeah. So. Cool. One of them is coming. Yeah, he's coming. All right, like there's relevance. Yeah, so he's coming. Um, All star cast. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's all I have. I'll, I'll share this document later and you guys can check it out. Cool. That's it.